In this video, we're going to be looking at how navigation works in an Ionic 4 application uh, that's using Angular. Now, to do this, we're going to be using this Quicklist application that is on screen now. Uh, this is actually an example from my building mobile apps with Ionic and Angular book. Uh, you don't need the book to watch this lesson. Uh, if you do want to check it out, I'll have a link in the description uh, below. Uh, but we're just going to use this as an example because uh, it uses a lot of the new navigation concepts. And so it serves as a, as a really good example. So if we're talking about just vanilla Ionic, uh, vanilla Ionic 4, uh, when it comes to navigation, you would use uh, the Ion Nav component, uh, which I have up on the screen now. And so if you've used previous versions of Ionic, you would have used Ion Nav. Uh, this is what we use uh, to push and pop uh, views with. If we have a look at the API for this uh, Ion Nav component, uh, you'll see the various uh, properties and methods here. And you can see down here we have uh, all the methods people would be familiar with if you have used this in the past, uh, like pop and push. And this is still what you would use if you were just using Ionic uh, without a framework. And you can still even use this uh, inside of an Angular application as well. Uh, but in general, the new approach with Ionic is kind of to let the frameworks do what they want. They can handle all of the framework stuff and Ionic handles mostly the UI. And so that means when we're building an Angular application, when we're using Ionic in an Angular application, we'll, we'll just be using the Angular style of navigation. And so what that means is that we will be using uh, routes. And so rather than pushing and popping various uh, pages in our application, we will generally set up a bunch of routes that look like this. They might be spread across multiple different module files, or they can all just be in a single app routing.module.ts file. And basically all this does is link a particular URL path with a particular component. Uh, so in this case, uh, I'm linking uh, the intro path to my intro page module. And so if we go into uh, the application and we hit the intro path in the URL, it's going to load up that component. Uh, but if instead we say go to checklists, it's going to load up the home page instead. And so if we just jump into the browser now and just take a quick look at what that looks like. I have the application served here. Uh, so you can see here the default is this forward slash checklist. And so that's uh, hitting this path here. And that's because we've got the default path here set to redirect to the checklist path. And so whenever we load up the application, that's going to hit this and it's going to load the home page, uh, which is what is on screen now. Uh, but if I were to say click one of these items I have set up here, I'll click that. And you can see now that it's gone to checklist forward slash prepare for trip. And that's a separate route I have set up here uh, with an ID. I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, later. But since uh, since the application can see we're at checklist forward slash prepare for trip, it's matching this, uh, this path here. And so it's going to load the checklist page. So this handles matching uh, the specific route, uh, depending on the path that is in the URL, and then it knows what component to load. And then whatever component is uh, uh, meant to be loaded, that is then displayed inside of the router outlet. So if we open up uh, app.component.html here, this is the template for our root component in the uh, Angular application. Uh, with Angular applications, you'll typically use something called router outlet. And basically what that does is whatever path has been matched, whatever route has been matched, it's going to take that component and display it in here. And that's what determines what is actually displayed on screen. And in the case of Ionic, uh, they actually have their own sort of special implementation of that called Ion Router Outlet. And basically that just adds, uh, adds a bit of Ionic functionality on top of the standard Angular router. Uh, specifically things like when you uh, transition from one page to another, you're going to get that nice uh, mobile style animation between the pages rather than just flicking to a new page. Uh, aside from that though, the concepts are all pretty much exactly the same as a standard Angular application. Uh, so you can look at you know to the Ionic documentation for some things, but you could also just look directly at the standard Angular way to do things and look at the Angular documentation. Uh, if you were, say, using something like Vue or React instead, then you would look at uh, their documentation for how to handle navigation. So rather than Ionic trying to force their own navigation concepts into all these different frameworks, uh, they sort of just take a step back and allow the frameworks themselves to define that.
Okay, so once we have our routes defined in our application, we know we can go to a specific URL path and it's going to load up the correct component and display that on the screen. Uh, but obviously when a user is using the application, they're not going to be using the URL bar to navigate. If I wanna go back to uh, the checklist page, I'm not going to just you know, backspace that, hit enter to do that. I'm going to navigate within the application itself. Uh, so we need to look at the ways that we can go about navigating uh, using uh, using our application. And that's sort of why I wanted to pick this uh, this application as an example, because it kind of uses uh, uh, most of the different ways that you can navigate. So one of the primary ways you are going to navigate is just by using a simple href. And if you're familiar with you know, HTML and the web in general, I'm sure you would have used an href at some point. Uh, generally, we use that with an anchor tag to link to another page. Uh, but in this case, we just attach it to whatever we are trying to turn into a link. I do want to quickly mention that it is better to uh, attach an href attribute to uh, either an anchor tag or a button, especially in terms of uh, accessibility and usability. Uh, but it is a bit unclear at this stage uh, exactly how you know attaching a link to an Ionic item, for example, should be handled in Ionic 4. Uh, this is still the beta we're looking at now, so that will probably change a little bit in the future. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, it probably won't end up looking exactly like this. Uh, but basically, uh, if we pretend this was just a standard uh, anchor tag or something like that, or a button, uh, we supply the href to the path we want to go to, and we also supply this router direction, uh, which is going to help apply the uh, correct animation to the transition. Uh, so if you're just clicking on a, a link, for example, the ION router outlet isn't going to know if that is a, is that a forward transition or is that a backwards transition? Yeah, are we going... Uh, forward into our application or are we going back to a previous page? And so it can guess at this, uh, but to make sure it gets it right, you can supply the router direction to specify what the direction should be. And so this can either be forward, backward, or root. And you'll see in the href here, I'm using the square brackets because I'm not just giving a, a literal string, I'm actually giving a, an expression to be uh, calculated here. And so I've got the string uh, checklists and then I'm doing forward slash whatever the checklist ID is, which is coming from our ng4 loop here. And then so the result from that is just, you know, whatever is clicked will take the ID, pop it into the URL, and then it hits our uh, other route we had set up. Aside from using uh, an href uh, to navigate between pages, uh, we can also navigate programmatically. And we can do that using a nav controller. And again, if you've used previous versions of Ionic, you'd probably already be familiar with nav controller. Uh, this has changed a bit in Ionic 4, uh, but basically we just you know, inject that into our uh, page like we usually would. I have a reference set up here for nav controller, and then I can access that and then specify which route I want to go to. Uh, so in this uh, application, uh, what we're doing is uh, we're checking if the uh, introduction tutorial has been shown before. Uh, if it has, we don't want to show it again, uh, but if it hasn't, well, we do want to show it. Uh, so all this does is check a value, and then uh, if it uh, hasn't been shown, we say this.navcontroller.goroot intro. And so all we do is supply the URL path that we want to go uh, that matches the route that we want to display, and then that's going to display that for us. Now I've used go root here because that's a, a root transition. We're changing like the, the root of the navigation stack, uh, but you can also use go forward and go back and it's the same kind of idea as the router direction. You just want to supply uh, the direction so that the screen transition can animate correctly. And so the last concept I want to touch on is passing data between pages. And again, I'll reference uh, older versions of, of Ionic. Uh, you may be used to passing data through, uh, through the nav controller, uh, accessing that through nav params. Uh, you could basically pass whatever objects you wanted between pages that way. Uh, so it's a bit different uh, with uh, the Angular routing. Uh, so as you can see uh, in the application here, when we click on this item, we're passing the ID through the URL. And so you can pass whatever uh, kind of information you want to pass to another page through the URL, uh, but it's generally not a good, uh, good idea if you want to pass, say, a massive object or uh, really anything more than just a simple ID or value. Uh, if you're trying to pass that through the URL, it's going to look really ugly and it's just not really a good way to do it. Uh, so instead, what we generally do now is if you want to say, uh, for this example, I have a, a list of checklists here. 
And then when I click on this, I go to another page and I wanna see all of the items associated with that checklist. So rather than passing the object uh, through to the next page when I'm navigating, uh, we just pass a simple ID, which in this case is just prepare for trip. You could use simple numeric IDs if you wanted, but obviously something like this looks a bit better uh, as a little bit more user friendly, I guess, if you're going to, to be displaying this on the web. Basically, we'll grab that ID and then use the service to grab the full object. So if we take a quick look at how that works, if I jump into the checklist uh, page here, and you can see that I grab the slug uh, or the ID from the uh, from the URL uh, using this.route.snapshot.paramap.getID. Uh, obviously, that's a bit of a mouthful, but basically we're just uh, injecting Angular's activated route uh, service here. And then this is just a way that we can grab the ID uh, value from the URL. So again, if we take a quick look back at our app routing module, you can see here I've set up that parameter here of ID by putting a, a colon in front of it. And so whatever is passed in in the URL in that position there, we'll be able to grab using uh, that method I just showed you there with the uh, param map. And then once we have that ID, we can use a service to get the or whatever we want, basically. Uh, so in this example, I'm using my uh, data service that I've uh, injected uh, into this page here. I've got something set up called data service, which is an instance of my uh, checklist data service there. So I call this.dataService.getCheckless, and then I pass in that slug value, that ID. And so if I open up my data service in here, we should have a get checklist function there. And then we just grab whatever checklist we were looking for, we just grab that from the checklist array that is set up. So rather than passing data objects directly between our pages, we're just passing a simple ID and then using that ID to grab uh, whatever we need from a service. And so in this case, obviously we're just grabbing it. Uh, well, this, uh, this service here loads it in from uh, just local storage and then we're just grabbing a reference to that from this array here. Uh, but you could also say you have, you know, if you maybe you're hooking up to Firebase or some other backend, uh, you could instead, you know, grab that ID and then fire off a request somewhere perhaps and uh, get some response back and then use that value. Uh, it just obviously depends on, you know, what your application does. Okay, so that was just a basic overview of how navigation works in a Ionic 4 and Angular application. Uh, obviously, there is a few more things to know than that, but they are the basics and that should get you most of the way there. As I mentioned, this was an example from my Building Mobile Apps with Ionic and Angular uh, book. So if you would like to check that out, I have a link in the description. And I also have some links to my, my Twitter and stuff like that if you'd like to follow me on there as well. Okay, so thank you for watching this video and I'll see you on the next one.